Okay, now we are going to create a static step. So if we go to procedures, we can add a static step. In the static step, we can specify our initial time increment, our minimum time increment and maximum time increment. I'm going to leave everything to default and simply say OK. OK, now under uh, our structural analysis case, we have a static step. OK, um, for this demo, we are using our mechanical analyst role, which is our high end analysis role for linear and nonlinear structural simulation. Um, the mechanical scenario creation app, which is uh, this app right here, it enables the analyst to construct scenarios containing multiple steps. So if you wanted to include a frequency step here you, after this static step, you could. The scenarios available include statics, dynamics, explicit dynamics, and so on. Also included in the scenarios are thermal, creep, linear dynamics. Um, you can see scenarios mentioned here. And so on. So here we will create um, a simple static analysis procedure uh, like we have done here. Although you can add more steps after this. So now we are going to go to our setup and we are going to select our finite element model that should be used in this simulation. Okay. And uh, um, we are going to select this finite element model and say OK. okay. So um, again, we can come back here and hide this if we want. Um, the reason we are, a, we are selecting a finite element model is because um, a design team can create 10 different finite element meshes and you can select any finite element mesh that you want in your simulation. Okay. Now we are going to create some uh, uh, loads and boundary conditions. So uh, boundary conditions are in a strain tab and we are going to create a fixed displacement boundary condition. We simply select this geometry. This is where we are going to fix our UAV for, for example, for wind tunnel testing. So we are going to fix these and say OK. So now we are going to create our pressure load. Um, to do that, we go to the loads uh, tab and select the pressure. So now we, we can name this as atmospheric pressure and thus for the support where this atmospheric pressure would be applied, we already have an existing surface, this one, and we can see at top and bottom um, the atmospheric pressure is being applied. Okay, and we can specify the value in Newton per meter square. 101,325 Newton per meter square. Okay, and then we say okay. Now we are going to create another pressure which is a wind uh, pressure on the out top surface. So for that we are going to name this wind pressure and support would be um, we have a pressure surface that we created previously. You can see it here and it's only on the top surface, not on the bottom side. Okay. And uh, the um, magnitude of this is minus 800. In reality, this can be a varying pressure surface. Uh, I'm sorry, a varying pressure that would come from a CFD simulation. Okay. But here we are uh, specifying a fixed value on the top surface. Okay, so that's done. That has created our pressure um, load and uh, boundary conditions. Now, if you don't want to see these symbols, we can simply right click and say visibility controls and we can hide the restraints and loads um, to get rid of that. Okay, having done that, now we are going to create our um, connections. So you may have noted that um, here our L1 is not connected to the wing. So there is a gap there. So 
we can connect that using a tie constraint. To be able to do that, we go to this interactions tab and create a surface based contact. Okay. In the contact option, we have an option to tie surfaces. So first we are going to select a master surface. So to be able to do that, I need to hide the, um, uh, the elements first. So I'm going to hide these. I've hidden all the elements. Okay, this is not what I wanted to select as the master surface. So I'm going to open this list and I'm going to say remove. Um, remove all of them. So my master surface is this surface. Okay, that I want to use to create a tie. And in the slave surface, I'm going to use um, these two elements. Okay, and then I'm going to simply say tie the surfaces. Okay, so this would um, simply create ties uh, between this geometry and this geometry. Okay, so we can do that on the other side also. But uh, in in the analysis that we will do, we um, I will show you that um, we don't have to um, use uh, these surfaces. Uh, the meshes for these parts. We can simply get rid of uh, the meshes for these and um, remove them from simulation. To do that, what you can do is we can show the meshes. Okay. And let's go to the visibility controls and our meshes are on. And we can get rid of these L1 meshes if we wanted. And from the properties, now we also need to change the skin because we deleted some meshes. So open list and we deleted these meshes so we can remove them. Okay. So now the l will not take part in simulation. So this gives you the uh, gives you the analyst as an option that you do not have to um, model the entire geometry in your simulation. Okay, that's the purpose of showing that here. Okay, um, now we need to make sure that we have our um, outputs requested. So here we have two output requests. So let's click on the first output. These were created by default by the platform. So first output you would see is uh, the output type is field output and a lot of things are pre-selected. So we are going to um, output only stresses and um, uh, strains. Let me get rid of uh, the plastic strains. We don't need them because that's not what we are simulating. And then we can select uh, some um, translations. I don't need to look at rotation, so I'm going to remove that. And then I'm going to um, deselect the contact and forces and so on. So we are limiting the output so that output database does not get huge. Okay, um, but you can output as much as you want. Okay. On uh, the second output, is uh, is type is history, and here we are selecting uh, some energy and then we can also select the volume if we need uh, for the model. Okay, so now our output requests are done and um, um, when we look at the results, we will be looking at um, the deflection in the wing to monitor local buckling. So first let me hide the mesh here. So this is the region from right from here up to this point, there might be some areas where local buckling may occur. So we want to remove local buckling. So we will be looking at local buckling in the wing. How much is the maximum amount to be able to monitor that we need a, a group. So here we already have two groups created and they are very easy 
um, for us to create. But uh, if we double click on the left wing group, it's a group of um, nodes and elements that were created by creating a box. So that you can see that that group goes all the way to this point. But I, I'm interested in looking at the buckling only uh, in the wing uh, up to this point. Okay, so I can simply drag this box and update um, this um, um, group. Okay, so that group is updated now. You can see that. Now uh, we are going to update the entire model by clicking on update all. So it's going to update uh, the entire um, uh, database. So now our model is completely up to date and um, we are ready to run the simulation. So you can see that the platform not only offers a wide range of multi-physics simulation procedures, but also is very easy to use. Furthermore, it is intuitive and multiple steps can be chained together to form a comprehensive plan of events that the model is subjected to.